In this video, I'm going to be telling you about how to take the derivative of an inverse function. But before I tell you how to take the derivative of these inverse functions, I need to remind you about how inverse functions work. So the definition that we're going to take in this class, and you can probably take in future classes, is that the inverse image of a value, f inverse of k, is equal to the set of all x's for which f of x equals k. And so I want to start off with a function you're very familiar with. That's, you know, y equals x squared. I'm going to call it g of x. Okay, I might be interested in uh, something like g inverse of 9. And what I'm going to recommend you do when you see g inverse of 9 is say g of x equals 9. And, okay, g of x is x squared equals 9. You can either take the square root of both sides of the equation. Remember that that induces a plus minus. Or you could just look at it and say, oh, hey, that means either x is equal to 3 or maybe x is negative 3. And since, you know, f is a function that takes in x's and gives you y's, it would make sense that the inverse takes in y values and gives you back x's. So I'm going to say that g inverse of 9 is the set that contains both negative 3 and 3, which is not a huge problem, right? So it's okay. Now, geometrically, what just happened there? Okay, I just, pardon me, that was a pretty rough looking x-axis. Okay, that's much better. That's the whole graph. Well, when I was looking for g inverse of 9, what I was really doing was I was going over here and say that's 9. And I'm going kind of out to one side and like, hey, I found graph. And I backtrack to where on the x-axis did that happen. Okay, and then over here, well, hold on. Keep it shut. Over here, I found a second point. And so I think that's a, you know, geometrically what's going on there. About g inverse of 0. Okay, g inverse of 0 is going to be the set of all points where g of x equals 0. So that's x squared equals 0, and that's just 0. And so you go on the y-axis to 0. Oh, hey, there was just one point. Oh, that's an x equals 0. That's what we're saying. So that g inverse of 0 is equal to 0. Okay? And what I'll tell you is that this is what's going to happen in AP Calculus. If you're asked to evaluate an inverse function, it's going to return just one value. And it will return a value as well. Okay, so there's not going to be any of this like, oh, multiple values or no value situation. It's just going to be one value for the inverse. Okay, for those of you that know or have, have heard this language before, um, they will only ask this question to you uh, about a function that is at least locally a bijection. But if you don't know about anything about bijections, then no big deal. Just keep taking the math classes and you'll learn all about it. Okay, so g inverse of negative 4 is, okay, I'm going to set g of x equals negative 4 and try to solve x squared equals negative 4. And again, maybe you know, you know, in the wider world of mathematics, there are solutions to this equation. But in our class, we're only interested in functions that take in a real variable and give you back a real number. And so, uh, I'm going to just say that this has no real solution, okay? Even if I know that might not entirely be true. But what this is equivalent to is going over here to negative 4, looking out to each side and being like, ah, I can't find any graph over here. Okay? But like I said before, that's not going to happen. The situation where y equals 9 and it pulls you back to x values, that's not going to happen. Or it's other, only ever going to be one value. All right, now let's talk about how to take the derivative of these inverse functions. And this is the formula that you need to know, okay? that the derivative of the inverse at a given x value or input value is 1 over f prime of f inverse. But I do need to remind you that um, f inverse of c, this is an, an x value. Especially the way these are usually pitched on, you know, college board multiple choice items, it's almost always a table of values, and f inverse of c is going to be an x value. And the proof of this one's real nice. Uh, it has to do with what we just learned about, the chain rule, right? So I'm going to in, kind of investigate on f inverse. But one thing that you need to know about an inverse function, you know, like an e to the x and a natural log x or a square root and a squared, is that they, they undo each other. So if you take f of f inverse of any x value, that's going to be x. And like I said, in this class, we don't have to worry about this being undefined or being more than one value or anything. It's just going to be one value. And if two things are equal, then their derivatives will be. 
Oops, so I can take the derivative of both sides of an equation. So I can take the derivative of x with respect to x, and that's going to be 1. And I can take the derivative of the left side, and I'm going to use the chain. So I take the derivative of the outside while leaving the inside the same. And then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. Now, this is exactly what I'm hoping to solve for, right? The derivative of f inverse at a point x. So f inverse prime of x, right? The derivative of the inside, the derivative of f inverse f inverse prime. Okay, now this thing right here is what I'm hoping to solve for. This is pretty much all, all, everything I need is right there. So I'm going to say f inverse prime of x is equal to 1 divided by that other factor over there on the left is going to be f prime of f inverse of x, which is what I'd hope to show you in the first place, right? So this is why this rule works. It's all based off the chain rule and the fact that inverse functions and, you know, it's original, they, they undo each other. So f of f inverse of x equals x. It's also the case that f inverse of f of x is equal to x. Um, it just wasn't what I was needing to use to show you this. All right, so let's work an example. And this is by far the most common way that they will test this topic on, you know, in AP calculus. It's multiple choice, data in the table, find me the value of the derivative of the inverse function. Pretty direct question. Okay, so find g of 3, okay? g of 3 is equal to f inverse of 3. And when I see f inverse of 3, I'm thinking, where is f of x equal to 3? Okay, you look on the f of x line in the table, and it's like, oh, there it is. Right? So that happens at x equals 5, okay? Meaning that f inverse of 3 equals 5, so g of 3 equals 5. So I'm going to find g prime of 3. Just scoot that up so I barely still in the shot. Okay, g prime of 3 is the derivative of f inverse at 3. We've got a formula for that. Just learn about it. It's 1 over f prime of f inverse of 3. But I know what f inverse of 3 is. I just did all that work to find it. f inverse of 3 is 5. And that's equal to 1 over f prime of 5. Okay. Make that substitution. And f prime of 5 is looking like negative 2. So this is 1 over negative 2. You can do this. I promise. If you feel like you want to try this on your own, pause the video and find g of 5 and g prime of 5. That's something you can find on this table. Okay. But I'm going to move on. Sometimes they'll ask us this, you know, kind of in code. And so what they'll say is, you know, h is the type of function where this equation is true for all x. And your job here is to know that this is code for h is g inverse. h is the inverse function for g. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need a point and a slope. h of 4 equals g inverse of 4. Okay, so I'm looking for where g of x equals 4. That's looking like here. And that's x equals 3. So h of 4 equals 3. And so the point is 4, 3. The slope is h prime of 4 is the derivative of g inverse at 4. It's going to be 1 over g prime of g inverse of 4. That worked just a second ago to figure out that g inverse of 4 is equal to 3. So I'm going to go over there, g prime of 3 is 2, so that's going to be 1 over 2. Got my slope. So I'm ready to write my equation. That'll be y minus 3 is equal to a half of x minus 4. Now I need to tell you about arbitrary derivatives. These are three formulas that we just have to know. At this point, they are inverse functions, and I've told you about regular forward trig, so I might as well tell you about inverse trig, right? And if it's something that you're eventually going to have to commit to memory, you might as well start trying to do that now. Now, I'll tell you that since we don't have implicit differentiation, we don't have the ability to take the derivative of an equation that has x's and y's intermingling, we're not going to be able to show you why the, these equations are true right now. I'm going to need a couple of weeks for that. 
Okay. So for now, you're just hoping to eventually commit these three formulas to memory, but you are not going to be like, you know, angsting about it for the quiz next time or anything like that, or the test over the unit two. We're, we're not going to ask you these questions yet. Okay. That'll come with time. Okay. We'll really, we will need to know these, uh, you know, by the end of the course, but we've got plenty of time to. For example, I might ask you to find the equation of the line tangent to the graph of y equals arc sine of 2x at x equals 1 fourth. I won't ask you to do this quite yet, but I will eventually ask you to do this, right? So we're going to need a point, and that would be x equals 1 fourth, and y is equal to inverse sine of 2 times a fourth is a half. Okay. Well, hey, I know that inverse sine takes its values over here, and inverse sine of 1 half is the most obvious place where sine of x is equal to a half. And I'm thinking that's going to be right here, right? Because a half is pretty low in terms of unit circle values. Pi over 6, and right here, see that's a 30, 60, 90. That's short leg is the vertical leg, so that's sine equaling a half. That's another way to think about it. That's going to be pi over 6 either way. No matter how you think about it. So that's 1 fourth and pi over 6. Okay. The slope is, okay. I need to take dy dx. And now the derivative of arc sine of x is 1 over 1 minus x squared. So the derivative of arc sine of 2x should at least start off with 1 over the square root of 1 minus something squared. And then, oh, that was rough. Both of those lines were supposed to be horizontal. They just weren't. And then we're going to have to multiply by the derivative of whatever goes into the parentheses. That's 2x, so that'll be 2. And then that'll still be a 2x. All right. So this is equal to 2. And then when I plug in a fourth, I get the square root. Again, that is horizontal line. Uh, 2 over the square root of 1 minus a half squared is a fourth. So the square root of 3 fourths. What that ends up being. I've got a point in a slope, so I'm ready to write an equation. That'll be y minus the y coordinate is equal to the slope. And I mean, you could do more with this, or you could not. Uh, times x minus one fourth, okay. and that's an equation for the tangent. All right, now the last example I've got for you is an, another tangent line. Line tangent of the graph of y equals arc tangent of x divided by 2 at x equals 2. Now, I'd like you to try this one on your own. So I'm going to just, you know, fill in the answer, and it's going to pop up in like 5, 10 seconds. All right, there you have it. Okay, so I just plugged in, had to take arc tangent of 1, so that's like solving the equation tangent x equals 1, or tangent theta equals 1, maybe an easier way to think about it. And I know that's going to happen at pi over 4, where sine and cosine are equal, where I've got a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Points 2 and pi over 4, my slope, okay, I have to use the chain rule, because the derivative of arc tangent of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So the derivative of arctangent of that thing in parentheses is going to at least start off with 1 over 1 plus that thing in parentheses squared. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of the thing in parentheses for the chain rule. But we know that the derivative of x divided by 2 is 1 half because x divided by 2 is the same as 1 half times x. Okay? And I plug in, get myself a slope as 1 fourth, and then I'm ready to get my equation. I think that's all I got for you.